Welcome, welcome once again to the Beatzilla PDX official news break. And today we are talking about Michigan and uh, a trustee, Keisha Hamilton. She sits on the um, school board and uh, I guess, you know, she made some tweets that people were not fond of um, in, in her little lane or her, her area rather shall i say um but you know here's the the funny thing about that is she was not wrong she wasn't wrong at all and so before i play uh any of the videos i just want to show you what she actually tweeted she tweeted that whiteness is so evil it manipulates, then says, I won't apologize for my dishonesty and trauma inducing practices and thinks you should applaud it for being honest about its ability to manipulate and be dishonest. Hashtag deceitful. Hashtag perfidious. Well. You know, the school board members did not uh, like that. And, and subsequently, they actually got a little bit of support from a familiar area. So just to put things in perspective of the type of people who are complaining. Um, and again, she's doubled down on what she said. She says she's not apologizing for what she said. And I don't blame her. That's her right and free speech to do so. Uh, here's another one of our tweets that people were a little bit upset about. It says the last thing you have to worry about is an animal, though that could be a very real threat. More dangerous are any white folks you may see on the trail. Be safe. And that tweet is from December 3rd. Yeah. But again, look at all the people who just came uh, out against her. So it's kind of co a coincidence that this is the first group that you see I'm talking about join your local chapter. So clearly there's a functioning chapter of the Proud Boys uh, in that particular area. How about that? Yeah, go figure. So with that being said, let's play a, a little bit. And this is from the, um, the news uh, talking about this particular particular case and then i'm going to actually play uh her speaking at the uh board meeting responding to the uh situation and uh she she definitely gives a, a very good job the reason why i say ex divester is because in the article they do definitely make sure they mention uh, that lets you know that they've been paying attention to the grassroots media, the, the new black media. They're paying attention, folks. Uh, so they wanted to make sure that you knew she was a divester. So her ex-husband is white, by the way. And so they wanted to make sure everybody got that little tasty tidbit of information. So before uh, they try to use that as some kind of smoke screen for what their real issue is, uh, we have to go ahead and just get that piece of business out of the way. Uh, so with that being said, let's continue and take a listen, shall we? Michigan, after a school board member tweeted about race, saying, quote, whiteness is so evil, it manipulates, then says, I won't apologize for my dishonesty, dishonesty and trauma-inducing practices, and thinks you should applaud it for being honest about its ability to manipulate and be dishonest. Garrett Tenney, live in Chicago with more. Hi, Garrett. Yeah, Dana, good morning to you. This board member is not apologizing and tells us that people who are upset about her tweet saying whiteness is evil either don't understand or are in denial of the realities of systemic racism. At this week's school board meeting, though, a number of parents blasted Keisha Hamilton for her post, which they described as hateful, racist, and disgusting while demanding her resignation. A person with such contempt and hatred for other races has no place in public life and certainly no place on a school board. One must be expected to set the highest standard of personal conduct for the community that entrusts its children into its care. Now, other folks in the community came out to support Hamilton and her actions and argued the term whiteness doesn't refer to white people, 
but to systemic racism. Asked to respond to her critics, Keisha Hamilton tells Fox News this, what I hope those who don't understand or are in denial of the realities of systemic racism, whiteness, white supremacy will do is be brave enough to attempt an understanding of the experiences of people of color. Despite the outrage and calls for her resignation, the Jackson Public School Superintendent tells us the district doesn't take any position on Hamilton's tweets and never entertained the idea of taking any action against her. Dana. All right, thank you so much there in Chicago for us this morning. Well, that says a lot. They never planned on taking any action against her. So that is just Karens and Kins being Karens and Kins. If y'all just don't know. So what what do they they also um try to do? Um and in the Daily Mail, uh the Daily Mail UK or whatever, boy, they are really a piece of work, boy. I'll tell you what. Uh so they're trying to make sure that they make sure uh this sister gets besmirched in any kind of way. However, <clears throat> Hamilton is a entrepreneur as well. So she is a business owner. She owns and runs uh, her own consultancy, uh, Diversity Minds Consulting LLC, aimed at tackling racism. And so she feels by calling out the racism that is uh, entrenched in the lifestyle of white supremacy, they are so upset. Now you see the the how the the board is kind of uh, or the people that are coming up talking to the board. You're you're getting the energy off of them. You see what's going on. It ain't hard to tell. And uh, this here, let me get that banner off. Let me get that fix that real quick. Okay. So what does it say? Uh, this is from like six days ago, I guess. White supremacist proud boy groups and their allies are planning a demonstration at this month's JPS board meeting on Tuesday, January 17th at 545 at Jackson High. Oh, so <laughs> this. So the meeting that they just went up and. Uh, they just showed. That tells you what family. That these people went there and obviously because the media was involved, uh, they they had to take a different turn. But they always like to say mob mentality and all of this garbage when it comes down to us. Right. Well, what is this? How is this different from any kind of organized hate? You're, you're organizing. This is you're planning a demonstration. It says members for, um, from these extreme groups took screenshots of my personal Twitter account and are ignorantly using them to attempt to further divide our community. These groups are attempting to advance extreme views, attempting to capitalize on the current uh, currently split board and are attempting to neutralize the greatest threat to them, an outspoken BOE member, me, while confusing you. Don't let that happen. Focus on the real issue and stand up for public equitable education. Well, uh, and then, you know, you can see the rest of that. So this is, this looks like a Facebook post. Uh, this is probably uh, put in their Facebook group, but I showed you the, um, the ad. Or not the ad, but the flyer from the Proud Boys with her tweet. So make no mistake. Well, so you you know what is that? How is anybody supposed to take that? Because you're putting her name and her face out there, right? Let's look at that. Is that not doing like a call to action for people that we already uh, are aware of? take actions like this. I'm just saying it kind of feels to me that that might be a little dangerous, especially when you have children like this. And this is how they raise their children. Although, you know, there's this instant, um, the situation with this six year old in Newport news, and they're really trying to figure out how to, uh, 
get this kid and put some charges on him. That's why I'm believing this kid is actually black. And they've already tried to figure out how to uh, get some charges on the parents. Uh, the parents even have made a statement saying that their gun was uh, secured. So the, that kind of stops, stares in the face. But yeah, we, I, I might do a little uh, piece on that in my next live broadcast. So y'all stay tuned for that. Uh, but with that being said, look at how they raised their children. And they said that they need to protect their children from critical race theory. And essentially, that's the attitude and energy to which these people are coming in right now for this sister, because what she has basically said is what we know of critical race theories, points of truth. Whiteness is dangerous. Hell, we know this. So with that being said, let's play her response from the board meeting. Under constitutional law and protection, I have a First Amendment right to free speech, and I exercise that in all spaces and all platforms that I choose. What I understand from being a woman in this American nation, and a black woman specifically, is that sometimes others would rather I not exercise any of my rights as outlined in the Constitution. I do not apologize for exercising any of my rights. I want to be clear. The real issue is not actually about me, and I realize that. What I am experiencing publicly as a black woman is what many of our black students and other vulnerable and marginalized groups are experiencing privately. The national temperature is at a boiling point, and this type of bullying, intimidation, gaslighting, ignoring, and attempting to silence that we have seen for a very long time, not only from individuals outside of this county, but also from this board table, is what's causing our educational system to fail here in Jackson. What I expect and hope that we as individuals who respect the Constitution and each other's rights um, under it would do is to one, learn to ignore tweets that are disagreeable to you. Two, fully read the tweet and attempt to understand it. Three, choose to be a part of the solution so that in time, the tweet could no longer be factually true. We have to ask ourselves, what are we angered over? The fact that it was said, or the fact that it is true, or is the issue our incomprehension of how policies and practices established by the white majority are impacting each of us? The real issues that brought many of us and many of these detractors out to exercise their First Amendment right are not the tweets. It's an agenda to eliminate and do away with public schools because public schools primarily serve the poor, the global majority, and other marginalized groups. We must not let them be successful. The real issue is an attempt to discredit, disrepute, censure, intimidate, and steal the seat of a person who dares to acknowledge the experiences of the vulnerable, who dares to compare them to the data of this district, the data along racial lines of this community, and address them. We must not let them be successful. The real issue is an attempt to disempower, bully, and intimidate citizens of the global majority and other marginalized groups into being quiet. You're here, you are here, you are here, you are here, <laughs> and as long as you keep showing up, they will not be successful. And the last of the real issues is an attempt to silence the discussion around disparities along racial lines that exist not only in this district, this city, our county, or our state, but across this nation. We must educate ourselves more understand how these racial disparities are impacting us and our neighbors and not let them be successful in silencing us. Desmond Tutu, the South African bishop, theologian, and human rights activist said, my humanity is bound up in yours, for we can only be human together. I invite each of you to present, I'm sorry, I invite each of you present 
to begin or continue the work around understanding the experiences of people who do not look like you. It's in these conversations where we will find that we are more alike than we are different. Our world is changing to reflect the rich diverseness of each of us present. Accepting that will allow us to be part of the solution rather than part of the problem. I'll end with this as we come off this Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. holiday. In his famous words, whatever affects one directly affects us all indirectly. And injustice. And there it is, folks. Um, and that's, uh, you know, that's Keisha Hamilton speaking herself uh, from her experience. Uh, and as it looks, she has had um, issues with some of the other, I believe the superintendent. Um, yeah, okay, because in this article by the Daily Mail, it, it does go on to say, last year, Hamilton became involved in a dispute with Superintendent Jeff Beal, who she accused of harassment and bullying. However, an independent investigation found that there was not enough evidence to substantiate the claims. Yeah, there never is. Uh, Hamilton's recent posts attracted white, widespread act, outrage, prompting local far-right groups, Proud Boys, to hand out flyers in the school, which Jackson said, uh, which Jackson, or which said Jackson School Board hates white people. And, you know, that's the one I just put on the screen. So, uh, and it, it, this article also is really trying to go hard on this system, right? There's a couple um, tweets that I guess she retweeted. So what they're trying to say, Hamilton has also endorsed con controversial tweets calling to abolish the police. And one uh, that she retweeted is from Reverend Jackie Reverend Dr. Jackie Lewis. This was from July 18th, 2022. Uh, it reads, police, policing does not keep us safe. That is not its purpose. So she retweeted that. Policing does not keep us safe. And that was not its purpose. That's not um, any kind of controversy there. That's just a truth of fact. Especially this is a black woman speaking that. So if she's speaking from her own community's experience, then who's to say that that would be controversial? That's just I'm white and I say so to even label it controversial. The other tweet is from Bree Newsom Bass. This is July 13, uh, 2022. This says, abolish the police. They're not here to protect us. They are foot soldiers for the wealthy and powerful. Again, I do not see the issue with that. And again, why would black folks, uh, you know, look at police any differently? They were started as a functioning member of white supremacy as uh, slave catchers. So, yeah, I don't know why you would expect black folks to have any kind of different relationship or view of these individuals. Um, now here's another person that defended the comments. And I think you heard uh, them talk about that, but I want to reiterate my Isha Jones insisted. She was not being hateful as she explained. Whiteness is the system, the ideology, the belief, the thought that because your skin is white, you are superior to black people. And that is literally some of this country's history of legislature. I mean, the, the you're talking about laws and codes and all of these things. Of Jim Crow, all of this has taken place in this country. Redlining. Uh, you know, right now, looking to avoid the conversation of reparations by funding a conflict in another country. That's happened before. That's how we got over to Vietnam, as it appears. Um, 
Let's see. So let's go on uh, to read because this this makes a lot of sense. It says, because your skin is white, you deserve better. Because your skin is white, you have better opportunities. That is the welfare system of whiteness in America. That is how systematic white supremacy works. Uh, it goes on to read. Meanwhile, Jackson High School teacher Paris Anderson told the meeting Hamilton is a caring and compassionate parent whose actions were not racist or anti-white. Never once in these five years has she questioned me, a white man, a conservative Christian white man at that, in regards to teaching her children about their history and history that is not mine. A, a spokesman for Diverse Minds Consulting told Daily Mail, Miss Hamilton's personal social media accounts are her own. Miss Hamilton has been open and clear of her intentions, and we recognize the system of white supremacy and one of its tenets, whiteness, that she was referring to in her tweet. Now, with that being said, understand this. Let me go back to that other picture that we just had on the screen. Because, see, that's what I want y'all to really, really let sink in. These children who are being taught how to shoot before they are taught how to talk and pee straight. They need protection from CRT because something might make them feel bad. Ain't that what we're hearing? Huh. Well, considering how you're raising them to uh, use weaponry, making them feel bad would probably turn a lot of these individuals into mass harmers now, wouldn't it? Hmm. This kind of makes you wonder how they get from that to this. But I guess now you kind of can see how. Right? And then, you know, from that, don't ever forget about this. <laughs> and this man came under Strom Thurmond. So, you know, it, it is literally the same type of deal. Man, they're trying to, and you cannot rewrite history if history that you're talking about is a lie in the first place. There's nothing to be rewritten. Um. Let me see here. There's another. Let me see if I can get this up. Uh, let's see. A, state, a statement on Diversity Minds Consulting LLC reveals Hamilton was previously married to a white man with the experience informing her, cur uh, informing her current views. Wow. Wow. Um, let's see, it says Keisha Hamilton, owner of the consultant for Diverse Minds Consulting, LLC, marries her lived experience with historical knowledge to bring you racial equity consulting or con consultation, coaching and training that will lead to transformation in your organizations. Keisha Hamilton established Diverse Minds Consulting, LLC, to fill the gaps that exist in the messaging. Um, in the training of diversity, equity, inclusion, and anti-racism. Diverse Minds Consulting with Keisha Hamilton is committed to historically authentic racial equity engagement from the lens of one closest to the problem and naturally closest to the solution. Keisha Hamilton used her lived experiences as a black woman, as a woman formerly married to a white man that experienced a mother uh, a mother to biracial children and many experiences of other black and brown individuals oh wait black and brown hold on now uh, black individuals and continuous study of history to inform the training of consultation and diverse minds consulting okay uh, uh, that's so they put that out there so to make sure that you guys knew 
Yeah, this woman had her white man, y'all. She had her white man, y'all. Just got to understand. So, you know, don't come caping for this sister too hard because, you know, this sister had a white man now. I mean, come on. Yeah, and now she's no longer with him, and that's fine. So let's not, you know, be overboard there. Let's just come on now. Let's not do that. You know how these folks be, though. <laughs> so none, nonetheless, shout out to that sister Keisha Hamilton for keeping it real, keeping it a buck. And, you know, yeah, you will find backlash over your tweets. But again, where's the lie, ladies and gentlemen? Where is the lie? <laughs> Whiteness is so evil, it manipulates, then says, I won't apologize for my dishonesty and trauma-inducing practices, and thinks you should applaud it for being honest about its ability to manipulate and be dishonest. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, this has been a Beatzilla PDX official news break. Um... Very interesting story. Very, very interesting story. Shout out to this sister again. Um, and she's sharing her experiences, which is, you know, quite OK. You know, that's how people learn. Uh, and, and she, you know, being a, a divestor, a former divestor herself is understanding the experiences. And maybe that's part of the problem that people are having is that she's kind of explaining what it was like in real life, not the um, over sensationalism that we actually see from some of these individuals out here. Some of them even claim that they're not divestors, but okay, that remains to be seen. So with that being said, thank y'all. Y'all can like and share and please subscribe. If you have not already hit the notification bell and hit the word all. So that way you will be notified every time that this channel goes live or uploads a video like this one. Um, follow me on Facebook and Twitter right now. My Twitter account is locked up, so you will not see me on Twitter for the next week, but, um, that's okay. We are here, ladies and gentlemen, we are here. So go ahead and share this on your social media. That would be uh, very helpful. And if you are watching the replay of this broadcast, not able to catch the premiere, um, you can go ahead and please give us a comment in the comment uh, line and let us know what you think about this particular story and uh, your opinion of it. So I always like to read those. So thank you very much for once again tuning in, ladies and gentlemen, to a Beatzilla PDX official news break. I have been your host for today's uh, news break, of course. So until the next time, ladies and gentlemen, stay black, stay vigilant, stay alive. Black first. Shalom.